Hello everyone! Welcome back to our math room. In this video, we are going to have another lesson in basic calculus and the topic is all about limits at infinity. What is the learning objective? At the end of the lesson, you should be able to evaluate limits at infinity. In the previous video, we have learned how to evaluate infinite limits where the function increases or decreases without bound as x gets closer to a fixed number. In this lesson, we will discuss limits at infinity, where we look at the limit or the behavior of the function, which is the independent variable, as x approaches closer and closer to infinity, or meaning it decreases or increases without bound, either positive or negative infinity. In symbols, the limits at infinity are written in the following. The limit of f of x as x approaches positive infinity is equal to L. The positive infinity symbol refers to very large numbers that are unknown, while the x approaches negative infinity refers to very small numbers that are unknown. These symbols, positive infinity and negative infinity, indicates only the behavior of the variable x and does not mean that positive or negative infinity is a real number. Let us consider this example. Evaluate the limit of 1 over x as x approaches positive infinity. Let us find the limit of this function using numerical method. So since we are approaching positive infinity, let us all list down the values that approach positive infinity. We have here 1, 10, 100, and 1000. To find the values of f of x, we will just simply substitute each x value to the given function. So when x is 1, f of x is 1. When x is 10, f of x is 0 0.1. When x is 100, f of x is 0 0.001. When x is 1000, f of x is 0 0.0001. Observe what happens as we approach positive infinity. As we can see, the values of f of x are approaching zero. So if you will be having 10,000, 100,000, 1 million, you will be seeing that the values are approaching zero. So we can conclude that the limit of 1 over x as x approaches positive infinity is equal to zero. We can verify if this answer is correct with the use of the graph. As we can see, as we move to the right, of x since that represents positive infinity the graph is getting closer and closer to zero in y therefore our answer is correct let's have another example evaluate the limit of 1 over x as x approaches negative infinity this time we need to approach the negative values let's say we have negative 1 negative 10 negative 100 and negative 1000 same procedure to be done we need to substitute each x value to the given function to solve for f of x. So here we have negative 1, next negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.001, and negative 0 0.0001. As we approach the negative infinity, we can see in the values of f of x that, are, that they are getting closer and closer to 0. So the limit of 1 over x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to 0. Looking at the graph of this function, it is true that as we move to the negative infinity going to the left on the x-axis, the graph is getting closer and closer to zero. Having these two examples, this provides us the theorem for limits at infinity. If n is any positive integer, then the limit of 1 over x raised to n as x approaches positive infinity is equal to zero. And the limit of 1 over x raised to n as x approaches negative infinity is equal to 0 as well. So we can conclude that either we approach positive or negative infinity as long as the exponent of x is a positive integer, the limit will always be 0. How about this problem? Evaluate the limit of 4x minus 3 over 2x plus 5 as x approaches positive infinity. As we can see in this problem, we already have binomials in our given function. And to solve for the limit of this as we approach a positive or a negative infinity, 
The rule is, we need to divide the function by x to the greatest exponent found in the numerator and denominator of the function. In this case, as we can see, the exponent of x is only 1 in the numerator, same with the denominator. So in order to solve for this, we need to divide all of the terms in our binomial by x. So let's do this. We divide each term by x, so we will be having this. Next is to simplify. 4x divided by x is 4, negative 3 over x as is, 2x over x is 2, plus 5 over x. Afterwards, we can now apply the theorem, wherein for this portion, we can have 3 times 1 over x. For this one, we can have 5 times 1 over x. After doing this, we can now find the limit of each term. So the limit of the constant 4 as x approaches positive infinity is equal to 4 since the limit of a constant is the constant itself. This one, the limit of 3 times 1 over x, this becomes 0. So 0 times 3 is equal to 0. Applying the theorem. Next is the limit of 2 is 2 plus the limit of 5 times 1 over x is 0 since we applied the theorem. So we have this. 4 minus 0 is 4. 2 plus 0 is equal to 2. 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. So the limit of our given function is equal to 2. Let's try another example. Evaluate the limit of 3x squared plus 5x plus 1 over 2 minus 4x squared as x approaches positive infinity. To solve for this, we need to identify the variable x with the highest exponent, and that is x squared. So we need to divide every term here both numerator and denominator by x squared. So we will be having this. So after we divide, we need to simplify. So we will be having 3 on the first. 5x over x squared will become 5 over x and then 1 over x squared. For the denominator, we have 2 over x squared minus 4 only by canceling this. After doing this, we can now apply the theorem. So we have 3 plus 5 times 1 over x plus 1 over x squared, all over 2 times 1 over x squared minus 4. After applying the theorem, we can now find the limit of each term. The limit of 3 is 3. The limit of the second term is 0 because of this. The limit of the third is also 0 because of 1 over x squared, all over 0 minus 4. So we have this. Simplifying this one, we can now have the limit of the function, which is equal to negative 3 fourths. Let's move to our third example. Evaluate the limit of 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 all over 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus x minus 3 as x approaches positive infinity. Again, we need to identify first the variable x with the highest exponent. And obviously, it is x cubed. So we need to divide each term here in the numerator and denominator by x cubed. After doing this, we need to simplify. So we'll be having 3 over x minus 4 over x squared plus 1 over x cubed. As we can see in the numerator, we can just simply apply the theorem. Therefore, the limit of 1 over x times 3 is 0. The limit of 1 over x squared times 4 is also 0. And 1 over x cubed, the limit is also 0. While well, for the denominator, we'll just be having 2 plus 0 plus 0 minus 0. As we can see here, the value is 0 since we have 0 over 2. So this is the limit of our given function. For the fourth example, let's evaluate the limit of x squared over x plus 5 as x approaches negative infinity. So again, we need to identify the term with the highest exponent, and that is x squared. So we divide every term by x squared. Then we need to simplify. So we have 1 over 1 over x plus 5 over x squared. Next is to apply the theorem in finding the limit. So for the numerator, the limit is 1. For the denominator, the limits are 0 plus 0. We simplify, we have 1 over 0. In order to identify what's the limit of our given function having 1 over 0, 
we can apply the infinite limits. So since the numerator's limit is positive number, and we are approaching negative infinity, positive divided by negative gives us a negative infinity. So this is the limit of the given function. At this point, I would like you to check your own understanding. You may pause the video to answer these problems. Let's check your answers. For the first problem, the limit is 5 over 2. For the second one, the limit is 0. And for the third, the limit is positive infinity. Did you get all of this correctly? If yes, great job! Here are the important things that you need to remember. First, when we say limits at infinity, it refers to the independent variable either decreases or increases without bound or as we move closer and closer to infinity. And the theorem that you need to take note, if n is any positive integer, then the limit of 1 over x raised to n as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity is equal to 0. And we also need to take note the rule that we need to divide the function by x to the greatest exponent found in the numerator and denominator of the given function. This is the end of the video. I hope you have learned a lot about limits at infinity. Thanks for watching. But if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be updated for the next videos to be posted. Bye everyone! See you on our next video.